Hey everyone. Well, I'm going to try and make this video as short and sweet as I can. I can go on about this subject probably for hours and hours and hours, if not days. I might just straighten that camera up a bit, it's a bit average. Um, I'm out here in the triple garage slash R&D <laughs> lab, testing lab, uh, with my old, old girl, the old AU. 25 years old this year and the paint's still there. <laughs> and it's so shiny, well it's not the shiniest car in the world, but or the deepest paint, but it is so much different that in terms of how it was when I first got it, that Ford and FPV basically said in Victoria when I was over there with this car, that when did you get when did you get it repainted because we didn't paint this car, it's too shiny. It's too dark. The blue's too dark. And I said, it's factory mate. You know? Anyways, um, paint protection, protection for glass, trim, paint, wheels, all the rest of it. Here's the simple here's my best advice for everyone out there, whether you're a detailer, you're not a detailer, you're an enthusiast, you're a car enthusiast, or someone who's just got a vehicle and you just want to keep it clean and keep it in good shape and you don't want the paint to be start to start fading and peeling off and your trim to go all dry and crack up and uh, which some of the exterior trim around the windows can do from UV exposure and, and, and exposure to harsh chemicals and stuff. My advice is wash the vehicle every week, every two weeks or at the very least every three weeks. Don't leave it any longer than that if you can avoid it. And as of course it's being stored in a garage and all the rest of it. If, you're, if it's your daily driver or your, especially if it's a daily driver, uh, put something on the car, on the exterior of the car and the interior, or at least the exterior, on a regular basis or a regular basis. So there's a number of options out there. You've got Canuba wax, you've got polymer sealants, polymers with Canuba in them as well. You've got silicate, 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 uh, silicate ion or natural silica based products. You've got ceramic coatings as well. And of course on the top of the shelf, you've got Wacom clear coats and PPF. Um, if you're going to use a Canuba wax and you like waxes and you're someone who's always liked waxes, here's the benefits of a wax. When you put it on, once you've got it on there, when it rains, the wax absorbs the water molecules and they tend to you tend to not find that your paint suffers from watermark etching or water spots where the minerals in the water when it rains dry, they set on the car, they etch into the layer of clear and if they're left too long they will actually require baking um, with an IR lamp or in a booth or something or neutralization with a chemical and then polishing and in some cases even sanding to get them out. Um, so you don't want to do that. So wash it with a the best quality car wash soap or rinseless wash product that you can find. I've been using rinseless wash products since 2002. I've been using Microfiber since 2001. Certainly not, not the earliest in the world of using Microfiber. Apparently Microfiber has been around since the 70s. I never saw any back then. But yep, and it's going to be eventually replaced in a few years potentially, or at least have a competitor to replace it within, a, within three years. Um, I know a particular company that's doing some very exciting things that will have the potential to replace microfiber with none of its downsides. Um, so, um, if you like waxes, it can be a Canuba wax that is a cream, a liquid, or a paste. The main things to, to be concerned about is A, buy a Canuba wax that has T1 grade Canuba in it. And it must have a percentage of at least I would say 3% up to 6% of 100% Canuba in it. If it's, most Canuba wax is yellow. Some of them bleach the yellow white and make it seem like a special edition. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't think so. But it's gotta be T1 grade. There's T2 and T3 grade waxes out there. There's ones with some pretty nasty solvents in them. So do your research, read your safety data sheets if you know about that. If you don't, ask me, I can tell you I can look at an MSDS sheet or an SDS sheet uh, that you supply with any product that you're interested in and I'll tell you the good and bad ingredients in them for you and if there are any bad ones in there and what to watch out for. The main thing to watch out for is the solvents. What solvents some of the, some companies are using. Not all products contain solvents but many do. Um, there are polymer sealants as well and there's polymer sealants with wax in it too. Um, some of them have a variety of different polymers and, and a wax combined. 
you can have that. Then there is another level, which is um, organic or inorganic silica or silicate ion, also known as SI14, SiO2, SiO4. It's a very complicated thing, even I don't even fully understand. But basically, I've been using a silica or silicate ion based product range since the early 2000s to protect my paint, but also enhance the color, which is why it's so, so dark. It has now four layers of coating, of ceramic coating on it, but under that is many, many layers of, of the silicate ion cream based stuff, which I've machine applied. Um, those will give you, the silica ones will give you the richest color boost because it has a, it gives a higher film build or in layman's terms, a thicker layer, which amplifies the color of the paint under it. And it gives you a better, a richer color and usually high, a higher gloss reading than what polymer silicon and canoe wax can provide. However, it has one downside. It does, does require sol some solvents, even up to 5% or higher to carry it, suspend it, because that's what silica needs. It needs, there, are, there might be some water-based ones out now that are water miscible, but silica for decades was never water miscible or water soluble. So you had to use some solvents to carry it and that can degloss, that can, products that contain the wrong kind of solvents will degloss your paint. It won't give you the same gloss richness as what a water-based one will. But they have some effect on lifespan too. Um, they can last longer. Um, and of course, on top of the shelf, we have ceramic coatings, which have been around since the mid nineties, perhaps in Japan, where they were coating windows to prevent water, water spotting. But there's their one downside with ceramic coatings, or at least some of them, is that some of them do really suffer badly from water spotting when it rains and the sun comes out and melts all the, or heats up the uh, minerals and the, the water droplets dry up and all the dirt and grime and the minerals in the water are left behind and they sit there and etch um, and they can cause problems. Not all ceramic coatings have that problem. I think it might have something to do with contact angle that they have, how hydrophobic they are, uh, I prefer a, I prefer a coating that would actually sheet water off in one big pot, one big sheet, than than beat up like mad, because beading just just you know increases the risk of, of water spotting. With the new graphene, supposedly the new graphene coatings, they they I think they have an effect on reducing surface temperatures on the paint, but also reduce the risk of water spotting to some degree. I don't know how good they really are. I haven't tried to. I've used a few of them, but not tested them or anything. Um, too much but pretty much even if you are just someone who doesn't want to go crazy and use the latest ceramic coatings or machine apply a polymer sealant or a silica based sealant and you just want to apply a wax or you just want to spray something on the car it could be a polymer a canoeval based spray a polymer based spray a silica based spray or a ceramic spray basically SO2 SO4 um, just do it. Go ahead and use it. Spray it on. Do it every one, two, three, or four washes, or or at least every few months, and you'll have some protection on the car, on the paint. You can do, some of them you can do on the windows, not all of them, but some of them. Um, coat your plastic headlights and tail lights so they don't go yellow and horrible and oxidize and fade and have to be sanded and polished and then have a, a protective product applied to them. And if you just do that, just apply a spray or a cream or a liquid or a coating if you want to have the best, some of the best, uh, best protection you can, um, you know, using a, using a coating, you know, you're not going to suffer um, from any paint fading oxidation, basically, and your paint's not going to suddenly start peeling off from the roof and the top of the doors and the boot and down the sides here. That's what they mostly do. Most of the cars, you'll find the, 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 the paint fade will be up here, it will be up at the top of the doors, it will be on the boot and all up here mainly, and, and eventually it will start hitting down the sides as well. But it's usually the tops first because everything's coming down um, and hitting it there, so the top surface is copper the worst, and then it's basically up, up here. But I'm not going to be showing you any products tonight to use. Uh, if you want me to want to know more about what products I use, well, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff I've used over the years. Um, I'm not here to recommend or carry on about any brands. 
I want to keep it simple. Um, just choose the technology you want, Knebel wax, polymer, polymer and Knebel wax, silica or ceramic coating. It's up to you. Um, ceramics come in sprays, um, they're spray sealants, not, not coatings as such. Um, you know, whatever you wish to use. And even if you just use a Knebel wax based spray wax, you know, or a, a, a polymer wax or whatever. You know, just put something on the paint. Um, I also recommend you do your wheels with a ceramic coating or a silica based or polymer based um, sealant, whether it's a cream liquid or a liquid or a spray or a wipe on, you know. Um, or even, you know, you can even use an egg, like one of those little HVLP guns or LVLP guns and airbrush air gun and blow it on with that and apply it with that. But as long as you spray white but or buff something on the car, on the paint, the trim, the glass, or just the paint, you are going to help your vehicle last longer. So, you know, every single technology from Kniebel to polymers to silica to, to coatings have a place. They all have a merit. Some last longer than others. Kniebel wax probably about anywhere from a few weeks to basically a year, depending on the type. Polymer sealants, three months to a year. Silica ones, probably about the same to slightly longer. Uh, those ones in a cream form or a liquid form that are not spray on. The spray on ones, probably three to six months at best. And ceramic coatings, in some cases, can last between one year, two years, three years, and even up to five or longer, but will require maintenance. Um, but you maintenance in between. But basically, you decide how often you want to put something on and if you want to do something that's easy and you're lazy and you want to do something that's easy, just use sprays. There's some really good sprays out there these days and, you know, it won't be the greatest protection. It might only be an electrostatic bond, not a covalent bond, which is one of the strongest, but it will be easy to do. My advice, though, if you're going to go down the road of these SiO2 ceramic spray sealers, I prefer SiO4 myself because my mentor taught me that basically they SiO2 tends to smear and streak a lot, so don't use don't use much. So yeah, my advice is if you do go down the road of using those, um, make sure you don't use too much. I mean, don't lather it all over the towel and cover the the whole panel in it. Just a nice fine mist and spread it out. Work it. Second towel, you're done. Don't use too much, otherwise you'll have a nice streaking and smearing mess. And there's another thing that can happen as well if you which you need to avoid is don't mix, don't go crazy mixing up different technologies. I mean, I've learned this lesson the hard way sometimes over the years. Don't go applying a ceramic coating on top of a Knuba wax. You can put waxes on top of Knuba if on top of coatings if you want, but you're going to change its characteristics. It's not going to be as hydrophobic, possibly. But don't put, you know, a polymer silicon based sealant on and then put a coating straight over the top um, or a Knuba wax and then an SiO2 straight over the top because you'll get something called a traffic jam and the paint will go, it might go all hazy and look all milky and horrible and it'll be a complete nightmare and you'll have a nice old mess having to get that off and you might even have to polish it off. So choose your technology, Knuba, polymer, polymer and Knuba, silica, spray or cream or a ceramic coating. If you've done a ceramic coating, use a ceramic spray to maintain it, which is an SiO2 mostly, and don't use too much. Um, basically, that's it. As far as glass goes, ceramic, ceramic coatings on front windscreens, side windows and rear windscreens are really good, especially in winter time, so that you can drive in 60, 70, 80, 100 km an hour um, speeds and you won't even need your wipers. You'll just be able to see straight through it because the water will literally just fly off. Um, and they will most, even the most paint coatings you put on glass, which I've done before when I haven't had a specific glass coating for windows, will last nine months on a window. So, um, and if you've got plastic headlights, well, this car doesn't, but if you do, put a ceramic coating or a wax or a sealant on them so that you d and regularly, so that you don't have them suffering any yellowing and then 
what will happen is with UV ray exposure and the light, they'll start going yellow, they'll discolor, then they'll start going all friggin' really dull and scratchy looking, and then you've got to get someone out, or you've got to start polishing it. Then if it's too far gone, you've got to start sanding it to get all that out, and then you can have to go down to 400 grit in some cases to actually fix it. So um, by just putting something on the car regularly, or something stronger than that, less often, and not just washing it, drying it, and just that's it. You're gonna, your paint's gonna last. Well, all the exterior surfaces and your interior surfaces are gonna last a lot longer. They're gonna look better, and you're gonna be a lot happier. And your resale value is going to be much better. And here's a prime example. My best customer I ever had is who was a lawyer. Um, he had a black HSV Astra VXR. He paid $45,000 for that car when it was new back in 09 or 2010. I spent a couple of days getting that brand new car absolutely tickety-boo, and I mean polished it lightly, conditioned all the rubber seals on the inside, did absolutely everything, the leather, protected every damn surface, even the bloody metals on the exhaust tips, and all the rest of it went full on nuts on it. And then I maintained it every, every, every four to six weeks, I maintained that car. And he, three years later, got nearly $40,000 for that car in, when he traded it in for the next model up, for the new one, in 2013 or whatever it was, or 2012. And yeah, nearly 40 grand. Now that's unheard of. He spent some money at the time maintaining it with me, but the thing was, he got his resale back. There's nothing worse than buying a car and in three to seven years time, the paint's faded and peeling off, your resale is going to be down the toilet. So it's worth the investment, and even if you just do the most simplest thing, which is wash it, clay it occasionally, put a spray sealer on there, and you just do that every so often, every month, two months, whatever, it's better than nothing, and it's going to help. And that's why, besides this paint being bloody thin, which it is, extremely thin, and only held up by the amount of layers of coating that's on there, it's not going to fade on me if I drive it out in the sun all summer. It's not going to have any effect on it. Nothing in the world except for, you know, something hitting it and denting it is going to damage this paint. Besides, obviously, keys and scratches and whatever else. But, you know, this paint is not going to be affected by UV light or the oxygen in the air at all. It's not going to hurt it one bit. So there you go, guys. It's a bit long this video, apologise for that, but if it's, if it's a bit too overly technical or you want me to go more technical or if there's any questions you have, let me know. Um, I just don't want to, I just want everyone who's got their, their nice cars, even just their work vehicle that wants to get it looking a bit better um, or just keep it nice or, you know, basically to, and not have to suffer any of these issues of paint peeling off and, you know, oxidation damage. Um, it's just my, me giving back to you after all these years. Um, I want to give back and just share some knowledge. So um, if you want me to, to mention a few things that I use or have used over the years um, or what's good today, I'm always available. Let me know. Take care. See ya.